everyone. So yeah, my name's Jesse, and uh, I'm you know got the privilege to talk to Asta today in the gallery. And I've known Asta now for a few years, so I've seen her work evolve and change. And it was a real pleasure to come in today and see that beautiful kind of room of paintings. And the first thing that, you know that struck me, Asta, about your work is the fact that you've got these you know a picture of a horse next to a picture of a vase next to a picture of your child or. And then you've got this one as well. So all in one kind of room. And really, that's the kind of essence of your work, is that you're kind of making these little vignettes about your life, it seems. And when you put them all together, they all talk to each other. So I'm interested, the first thing I wanted to ask you is, like, how comes, what, what do you, why do you choose to paint like a vase of flowers or a, a horse? How, does, how do you kind of, <laughs> why, why do you like put the things together, you know, like it, different yeah. subjects? Uh, well, I just, it's more just like, because it, I suppose it's two different things, like they're coming together now, being curated together, but obviously we're momentary, like just, I just, I think it's semi-conscious and semi-subconscious, so it's just like, paint my children, I've just, might be doing homework and I think to myself, I should be like painting something. And then I'm just like, no, I'll just paint the children doing homework because that's like here. So I'm very like solution. I just do what's there right. and do what I love, basically. Yeah, sure. So, uh, and what makes you out of interest paint like the horse in the, the way you paint a horse? What, what, what are you kind of connected to when you paint that because horse? Because the horse is, uh, like I said, okay, so like, um, Everything, you know, painting is a, wind, a portal, a window, a dream. It's like a fiction. Right. And um, so things work, like it's a horse is a horse, and a horse is also free, mm. tameable. You can ride a horse. Horse has, you can, I'm a big rider, I love horses. And also they've got amazing, and like, just kind of, when you're with the horse, you know, it's therapy. Yeah. Um, but it's a symbol, you know, everything's a symbol and then it's also the thing it already is. Mm. And horses is just freedom. Yeah. So what I loved about the little horse downstairs is it looks like you painted it and then it feels like you've kind of smudged it out with your hand or something. <laughs> and I kind of, one of the other main things about your painting, <laughs> is, this is why we stand up when me and Nasta talk, because we have to move around, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> I can't <laughs> um, but also, Asta, when you paint, I, how, like when you're in front of a painting, how do you, I'm interested in how you move or kind of, oh. like, like how do you kind of engage with the painting? Because you do move around a lot. Yeah, so if I'm standing, yeah, um, okay, if I'm outside, I, because people come up to you, so you, if you have music on and you're moving, then they don't really talk to you, they're like, this yeah, person yeah, is like, I'm hinge. Yeah. And then you just kind of, kind of keep them away, like, yeah, cool. And you're busy because also it's very quick the style of painting that I'm doing. It's not style, but like the method. So it's like one layer mainly. I don't really let them dry and then do more and let them dry. Like I do a bit, but uh, I use rags a lot. Yeah. Like so, I make paintbrushes in one hand, rags in another. Like that's what Bonnard used to do. And it means you can go go forward and also go back, which you can't do. In day to day life, if you make a mistake, that's it. If you've made right. a mistake, okay. with painting, you just always go back. Yeah. You go forward, you go back forward. So, on some of the painting like this, you rub in away a lot. Yeah. You, you can see that the paint's been kind of rubbed back and pushed into each other. So, that's what I love. It's like this dance. And it, yeah, I, I really love the way you do that with your work. It leaves a trace, there's a trace yeah. element that you get. And then the other thing about it is. Don't, I like the balance between like it's kind of your paintings are kind of generous and beautiful, but they're also kind of a bit some there's an element of sadness and something sometimes a bit crude and kind of you know rough. What do you yeah. think about that? You know, is yeah. that like a reflection? <laughs> what do you think like you know like this thing of you talk a lot about you know your your family and your you know the life and the pressures of, you know and the, the paintings reflect that kind of thing of something beautiful but also something like kind of. They're angry and agitated. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, people see in painting.
paintings what they are have inside them as well. <laughs> 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 I see a lot yeah. of beauty, I see a lot of beauty. <laughs> <laughs> lovely colours. Yeah. Yeah. No, but um, I think it's that very you, spiritual. you know, the yeah. balance of like, yeah, trying, I don't know, I think that because I learned quite a sort of traditional method basically, it's based on abstraction, like pure, you know, like an eye is not an eye, an eye is just a sort of collection of things. And then there's also obviously the school, of, which is totally brilliant where people are drawing from their imagination, you know, like uh, the Egyptian drawings of an eye, it's a representation. And then, so you have both of those things, and, they're and, they're and you can work with both of those. And I'm, I, I veer on the, like, just abstract representation side, but then you can also just, you can dart out into yeah. things. Right, yeah. yeah. And what do your kids make of your drop painting? What do they What do they think about when? I'm very honest. When When they yeah, When they You're doing the home You're doing the homework, but they know that you're thinking like yeah. that. But what do they make of your paintings? Well, I'm literally there like, drawing oh, really? them. Um, do you think they, they love it? They yeah. like it. Children um, like attention. Attention yeah. is love. Yeah. Love is attention. They're the same thing. And then so if you're looking at them, you know yeah. that's good. Better than not looking at them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they like it. And, and they, and they, they don't always think they're good, but they enjoy them. I think they, they're not here to. They would. Luckily, and do they? Do they, they uh, do they like painting? Yeah, yeah, they do. They both love painting because they just copy. I feel like children copy and feel they can walk into the spaces where you are, like the things you're doing. They can do. Yeah, and I'm going. I don't know which what question I'm asking next or sometimes, but like. Um, what do you feel about like showing here in Newland Art Gallery? Because you you've had a you know you, you it's grew up, you grew up around here, didn't you? Yeah, so yeah, I grew up. How does it how does it feel to have a show you know to have it's a show amazing. here? It's like a kind of home thing. Yeah, it's like coming home. I've got a room full of uh, friendly faces, friends, and family, and, and it's that's great. And this is an amazing institution. Yeah. And look at the view. I mean, the space, the yeah. place. Yeah, it's very nice. And a lot of my paintings are made down here, and I'm here a lot as well, so... That's another element of your work, that you're kind of moving around a lot. Mm. So that's... I know, do move around a lot, yeah. yeah. And then, then we've got this painting, which I really think this adds something to the show. There's really poor light in here, so it kind of... But downstairs, this kind of really adds to the mix. Can you say something about how you've arrived at using text in your paintings. But how comes that has happened? Sometimes I feel that a painting can take a bit of text, basically. And if the jury's out, you get different feedback. But sort of, uh, this is actually New Lynn Harbour behind there. And that was a self-portrait. And it's uh, it's like ancestral. It's it's just a hungry ghost lab food. It's a kind of mashup between a, like a Japanese idea. They have a, the the festival of the hungry ghost where you have a picnic with your ancestors and you bring food to your ancestors. All right. And then me and the children went to see a talk about ultra processed food. Right. Which is like. <clears throat> Out there in the shops and everywhere, but it's it's not really hum it's not that good for humans. It turns out, <laughs> and you know there's a lot of eating disorders in my family, and like they were butchers, and so that's it. So yeah, it's, and then what about the eyes? Like you've kind of you've kind of it's interesting that the fact that you painted your children and vases of flowers and there, but when is this a self portrait? Yeah, that's a So then when you come to paint your, yourself, you're a bit brutal with yourself. I think that the, the like painting paint the eyes out. was about that. I was, the painting started to become about this topic, and then I put the words in because I thought people might not get it. They were like, oh, she's got a headache or something. Yeah. And actually, it's like, no, this, that, and the other. You know, hungry ghosts, lab food, love for 
And then other people, and then people will just see it and see something else. Yeah. As well. But it's very important in the context of the show to see that alongside this. Mm. And I think that that sparring really works really nicely. So, um, and like, can I ask you a little bit about you've got a particular palette? Yeah. Uh, your palette is quite uh, limited. Well, I would say it's limited. I'd say it's it's just very particular. You kind of seem like you're. You're really specific about what colours you want to use. Like the painting is quite oh, energised yeah. and a bit rampant sometimes. But the colour seems like you've really you're quite deliberate. How do you how do you arrive at your colours? Um, basically, there I have used colour harmony theory, which is a bit cobbled together. But basically. I have a thing, my own theory, and everyone, you know, sees colour differently, and I totally, it's not like this is the law, this is m how I see it, is like, <coughs> colours that contain each other don't like, don't, so if it's a yellow and a green, which obviously green is like blue and yellow, they don't get along that well. Right. They're kind of related, they fight. <laughs> Whereas the yellow is like to the purple, which has got nothing, the yellow and purple are like obsessed with each other, they don't, they can't understand. They're like, they're attractive, but they're not, they don't contain, it's a yin and yang. Okay. So like it's, I've got pairings that are like that, like yellow and purple, yellow and blue, red and green, but, you know, you can go on and, and then, yeah, so that's it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all the colours are nuanced, they're like, been modified, you know, a lot of people. You know, you, you're modifying all your colours, though. Yeah, because what I just said, you can yeah. take it down, you can push it, because then you're going around the wheel, you can use this tone. So like, do you mix take it, your do green you, like, a bit spend more. quite a bit of time mixing the pa on the palette? Yeah, but not much time. Yeah, relative to you, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I mix them up, yeah. And it's quite weird that you, you talk about things don't get on and things do get on. Uh, in the in recently, I remember you saying something about you made one a really strong painting that was kind of to do with this idea of good and evil. Yeah. And I think that carries in your work. Like, mm. can you say something about? Do you, is that how you kind of see the world a little bit? Like. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely do. Yeah. I think that I do. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it is. It's quite a deep one. <laughs> but do, do you think that kind of comes across in your in your painting, like this idea of things getting on and th like things sparring, things like fighting a little bit? Or do you find that good and evil is in your painting, or do you see it in the way yeah. you look at the world? I think that just like that, basically, like uh, what you, um, it it. It, um, it goes all the way up to the abstraction of good and evil, but it also comes all the way down through the layers of reality. And good and evil is as real as that chair there. Mm. And it's here, you know, we can talk about that. Right. It's in the world. Yeah. And it, uh, so it's probably in my painting too. So do you, <laughs> do you feel that um, painting helps you, like, process the world and uh, you know, deal with the world and it, it just it give you some sort of catharsis to make paintings. It might do, but if you, I don't rely on that because the first lesson I ever got from Bo Hilton, and he's not here, but it's, it's not easy, it's not relaxing, it's not therapy. And if you don't think that, then you might not do it every day. Right. It's like a job in the country, just show up. If you get a bit of therapy, that's lucky. Mm. And I do, of course I drift away, but I also have a Real, like if I thought it was, I feel like if I thought it was going to be therapeutic, I might not do it. Basically, because yeah. that's my what I'm like. It might not be therapy, but you know, it's good to like dance and like you know, go for a nice walk and, and paint is the same thing. It's a, a kind of a really layered form of doing something that you know you loss of loss of the self. It's amazing. It's such a privilege to be to do it. So, because it is a, a joyful thing. And that's why I quite like, like gardening. I like seeing this painting in the context of the show because this is spiky and a bit, I don't know how, what to make of it. But when I see it next, if they were all like that, I wouldn't get this tension between, not necessarily good and evil, but you know, something tender and melancholy and something spiky and a bit agitated and annoyed. So I think yeah. that's, that's what I like about your work, the kind of tensions. 
do you find that you're trying in your painting to create some kind of resolution or kind of not beauty but kind of you're yeah. trying to resolve the world in some way I definitely am, am someone who believes in beauty yeah. and order exists and probably maybe because I'm really chaotic and can mm -hmm. get, it can get ugly yeah. <laughs> but you know because some people say oh well, why don't you just paint a bit of garbage in the corner of, of, a, of a, like a car park you know you're not getting real enough <coughs> say the gun. that's fine maybe I will one day so. <laughs> but I, I'm interested you know what you focus on increases and what yeah. you you know you put your attention on what's going well yeah and then obviously with human beings just notice problems that's what we do we notice problems so you're going to notice the problems in it but I do believe in focus. The eye, you know, the eye. There's a reason the eye is at the top of the pyramid. It's, right. It's vision. It's looking at things, like really looking. Yeah. yeah. So and then painted like you're obviously fixed up. What What do you think it is it about the image of a vase of flowers that is working well for you at the moment? I mean, am I imposing oh. my ideas when I say it, it feels like it can? It, because in the context of the show, it can feel like. You know, it can stand for like a family or two people or... Oh, yeah. You know, there's one that's very deliberately two vases and the flowers are two, like looking at each other. Yeah. So I do think of it like yeah, that yeah. sometimes in some paintings. But that may or may not matter to the people seeing it. Yeah. But flowers are also order. Like, to get people growing those flowers, you know, I, don't, I want to grow flowers. I do grow flowers, but... It's a, it's, a, it's a symbol of civilization. Civilization, right. me and my children are inside civilization. Without civilization, yeah. it's going to be ugly. A lot of evil. So, yeah. like, it's good. You know, a vase of flowers on your window, that is a really good place to be. Looking oh, at right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good, nice way of thinking about it. And then the, 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 the buildings are like, they're not like in the background, they're as much in the foreground as the, the flowers. The flowers are even more pushed back. Yeah, yeah, with that painting, yeah. Well, I just, I didn't think about that. Was that was unconscious. Yeah. I just, and I liked it when it occurred that the flowers were receding. Because they're actually not flowers, they're weeds. Right, yeah. They're like cow parsley. <laughs> That's my lovely friend, my friends who I work with brought them in my gardening friends. They're big and, you know. Yeah. There's a couple of daisies there. And then another thing that I've heard you mention in the past is this thing about hypnosis. I'm sure you've hypnotised oh, yeah. a couple of times. Why is it? Why is it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, what, can you say something about that? Or, you know, or can you enlighten me if you did actually do that to me or not? <laughs> no, I know. It's, that is a thing. It's a, it's, it does have creepy notions. But also... Every time, you know, the hypnotic state, when you read a book, you're in a, in a trance. When you watch TV or watch a film, uh, we go into the, you know, we voluntarily, like, subsume our attention to something. So um, yeah, so you see that when you're painting. So I'm, prob yeah, definitely in a trance to that <laughs> painting. Right. You get entranced to ideas. Right. Mm. That's what, you know, we're all entranced to our ethic. Yeah. So. Oh, are you actually trained in hypnosis? <laughs> I was semi-trained, I did a few. Right, because I was sure. I did a few times, yeah. hypnotherapy, not yeah. like stage hypnosis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I promise. <laughs> but maybe one day, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> no, I, I, I went, when I went to therapy, they, they, they would do hypnosis at the end, and it was a really good way of like processing all the stuff you've kind of gone through, and it kind of lets it go, and you can feel like you can deal with it. So I can see that in your painting. They're kind of, they you're not, you're not really making a picture as such. You're making a kind of. It's more to do with the act of painting. You know, it's more to do with the being lost in the vase of flowers, isn't it? That's what really interest. Is that it seems like that's what's really interesting. You're not interested in making a picture. You're trying to convey a state of being. Maybe. Jesse, I'm glad that you you're are. seeing things. <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah. I, I am, yeah. Like, and, and uh, like a, a, hit, a trance is basically just a waking dream. And when we're in a dream, like we process, you can process huge ideas and with, 
symbolic representation. That's what it meant about the horse and yeah. the vase of flowers. You know, obviously, it, it works as a symbol and it works as a visual. It also works as an abstract visual composition. That's yeah. another element of my paintings and stuff. But I mean, I love the way the pink's distributed, right? It hit these bars of pink in this, yeah? Yeah, are you quite conscious about that, or do you, do you try yeah. not to be too conscious? No, I'm very that? conscious of that. Yeah. Like I'm, that's what I mean. It's a jargon, but it's not jargon. But you know, abstract composition just composition. It just means how people work with total abstraction. You know, this looks good here. Why? Why doesn't it look good there? Why? Why? And then, so just working on those terms as well. Like, and it is like it's semi-conscious thing. And does a painting sometimes kind of implode for you, like, because you make paintings quite quick. When they don't work, what do you do with them? I leave them at home. Yeah. Do you, go, do you just go over them? or? I just, just leave them for a bit. Andrew Lytton taught me that. Just yeah. turn it to the wall and just leave it. Just keep going. And then you might add, like, there's a painting that says Senon, like, Angel over Senon, that for ages, it was like, I, I liked it, but I just knew it wasn't quite right. And then... Just before the show, I came in and did some interventions and a lot of paintings, and that's how they... And I, yeah. love, the, I love these little paintings, which are, some of them are a bit wet, which is really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand artists that make wet paintings. Um, that one's not wet, so it's oh, right? okay. That is wet, that's not wet. <laughs> um, <laughs> but this is a lovely little painting. Can you tell me who this is? Is this Jesus? That is a painting. Or is that me? That is a painting of a drawing of Jesus. It's a painting of a drawing, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, like, what's going on with these small paintings? They're like little, like, prayers or something. Is that right? Um. They're like, why, why paint a picture of? It's like a little, it's like a little um, shrine or something. You know, it's like a little. Prayer. Jesus is can you know is a kind of, it, it okay, an archetype. So, the archetypal hero. The archetypal victim, um, and like it could mean something. I like that vase a lot. That vase is, you can't really see it in that painting, but it's got this mother kind of carrying a child. And I had twins, and there was a lot of carrying children. And so it's like, I don't think it actually, I really don't think it matters. I'm not copying out. I don't think it actually matters what I brought to it, like if it's not coming across, then uh, it mean, it mean, at the end of the day, it does just mean what people who see it see. Okay. And so, so a Christian will see it and see one thing, yeah. and other people will see other things. Yeah. But it's, again, it's not, I, I enjoy seeing shows where you feel like the artist is exploring different things and trying out different things, and that's what, you know, you've got downstairs, you're, you're you're trying, this painting again is something different. Again, it's slightly like a, a shrine to this person that's sitting in a sofa. So that's a painting of David, who's the father of my twins. And I painted that after reading Matisse on art. Yeah. Uh, and understanding more about what he said. He said like, a line n never comes on its own. It always comes with a friend. That's about his drawing, but... Um, yeah, so that was kind of like, it's, all, it's kind of about Matisse, actually, in yeah. a way. So it's like a homage to Matisse and to David. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, and, and the it's room just and calm, it's my house in the woods, and that's my studio at the back. And, but when people come to see, they don't know David, you know, people yeah. see representations of other humans in relation to like the archetypes that is what I basically think yeah so what's on like what's like where where are you do you feel at the moment with your painting like I've seen you you kind of changing and evolving over the last few years and it feels like you've really kind of you've really arrived in your own skin is that fair enough that's great. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, right. I feel like you're in your own. Yeah, you like. And and how do you feel about the next year? Like, what having this show here? What does that? How does that feel like? Because it's a show where you've got a, you know, an important feeling to the pens and everything. Mm. So how do you feel about how you're going to go forward this year? Well, um, 
I think that it's just one step in front of the other, and um, I might be doing something in Penzance um, later on in the summer. We talked about it, me and um, the lady from Daisy Lang. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and other thing, uh, I've got a show in London yeah. uh, in October with Andrew Lytton. Yeah. And basically, I just never stop. I don't stop. I'm yeah. a laser beam. A machine. Yeah. And that's it, it's happened already. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear. So, uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm loving that. So, it's been very beautiful watching the, the sun, all the beautiful birds over there. But um, while we're getting very uh, beautiful about everything, has anyone got any questions that they'd like to ask? Yeah. I want to chip in about the stars and the, and the, and the Jesus. And yeah. so we grew up, I'm a master sister, we grew up with our mother making shrines all the time. And I think it's very unconscious that you are making and painting shrines. Yeah. Little shriny. She yeah. always had devotional statues, flowers, vase, you know. Yeah. I think you don't even realise. Not just my her. mother, <laughs> but my first ancestor. Yeah. First but, person who talked. But, but your mother is, and my mother is the most, you know. and my sister maybe. There you go. Yeah, so you two, do you make little shrines as well? <laughs> I do. Yeah. 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 Her garden is a shrine. It's a true shrine. Yeah. So, yeah, it, but, but there's yeah. also something about a flowering vases. Like everyone loves that. Yeah. yeah. And everyone has to paint it as an artist and their own adaptation of it. And it's, it's. The, it's women. Yeah. Flowering yeah. vases. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very you, simple. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's interesting because, like, do you think it's like an arch another element to your work is this thing of archetypes? You know, yeah. the good and evil, and then you talked before about archetypes. And, like the flower in the vase is is kind of taps into like a universal subject that we all relate to. Mm. It all has an inherent meaning, you know, that you're playing with, but. You, and you've done it well because there's such a kind of like emotional range. You're not just imposing one emotion onto the vase. It's like a bit of tenderness, a bit of like magic, a bit of you know sadness. The flower might die, and then the paint is kind of you know weird and gun gungy and messed up. Mm. So what do you feel about like do you th do you, do you kind of think a lot about archetypes? I re I've, uh, basically like Jung said. When all the gods out there are dead, and they're not there out there, if you don't believe they're there, then they, they're still there in your subconscious, and that's what his, like, thing of, uh, and, you know, I can't remember the name of it, but, like, analysing dreams. He was going into dreams to find those archetypes again. But they're still there, they're yeah. in the archetypes. Yeah. And I, that's amazing to me, that's, like, something I think about. Yeah, so do you, do you think it's a bit of a shame that we've kind of, lost a, a certain de a degree of like, religious or kind of spiritual... I don't know, it's so hard to tell because we've got dentistry. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> we've got dentistry, like pain, you know, I don't know. I mean, art, have we? I could, it's very individual, everyone has their own... There's out there still, and it's just something that we evolved with. Like, dream. Like, if you don't dream, you don't sleep, you die. Literally, yeah. you just die. After really not that many days. That's why they had to stop doing it in the Guinness Book of World Records. I don't know what I'm on about now. Stop it! No, we've just been moved into... Because it's about religion. But like, we've become so... We're so clever and we don't believe in religion, but we've lost something as well, maybe. Maybe. Like if, you know, the gods in pu plural is much better. Maybe. I think it's interesting that you yeah. put a... Um, a, a daffodil is obviously a narcissist, and, yeah. and it's uh, oh. and they're both looking at each other. Yeah, they that's are my looking take at each on other. It. It's a yeah. relational, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, daffodils are great, aren't they? Well, it's very cornal. Um, yeah. Cornal. Very cornal. Yeah, and the black. Quite Easter. It's actually blue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Midnight art. Sorry. I was going to ask which you started painting first, people or uh, flowers or some uh, kind of still lives. Because oh. your figures, I feel they're quite a different style, um, mm -hmm. and they're almost hockney esque. Mm -hmm. I wondered if you, you were conscious of that, mm -hmm. and when you started painting. 
Oh, well, okay. When I started painting? Figures, and which came first? Well, basically, figures first, because I did animation training, and that was just in Dublin. So it was like something out of 40 years ago, where they just, and because it was animation, it was just life drawing every single day, paint, life drawing people, but for the figure. And then going to the dead zoo, what's it called? The Natural History Museum, <laughs> painting the, <laughs> drawing the animals. And uh, so people, people, people. And then, but I didn't know how to paint. And then when I got to my 30s, through an amazing thing, I like, I always wanted to paint, but I just thought I can't, I won't be good enough. But then I just actually tried oil paint. And uh, <sighs> there was portraits first. Mm. I can't remember when I first did flowers. Mm. Uh, I love the way you paint water, because mm. I think that's so successful. And here the table got the way it falls over the edge, it's got a real, and it... Painting water really is like, the way, how do you paint something you can't see? Yeah, yeah. So then you just see what you see. Mm. So mm. Just see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But also, like, I don't know if it's fair to say that, yeah. you know, like a lot of artists talk about, you know, a lot of artists say the artist needs, you need to remain like the amateur, the, the learner, the child, you know, not to become I know, proficient, yeah, that. not proficient and master your technique. It's lucky they say that. Yeah, it's really handy, isn't it? <laughs> um, but that's what I get with your paintings, you're like, you're, you're searching, you're, you're, the struggle is what makes them really interesting, you know, not like, they're not like proficient, they're kind of, you, yeah. know, you kind of show that you're, you know, struggling. Mm. They're not contrived. Yeah. Yeah. I think if that's to do with when to stop, like maybe one could keep going and then take it to a place where you didn't like how it looked anymore. So then you just have to be like, uh, uh. and also I'm, it's just part, it's actually a facet of my personality. I'm extremely like, um, what's that thing? ADHD? No. Uh, <laughs> when you, you know, like I've got a lot on, so I don't have that much time, but that's been really good. And then I became conscious of it. But it's also, I was like, when, the method that I learned to paint beaches, I was taught by Bo Hilton. Mm. It's constable sketch, it's one layer, so it's, it is really quick. Yeah. Mm. And different people do it differently, polish them to a different extent, but it is quite brutal. Mm. You're, do you think you're, you're um, moving away from your teachers? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're like, you're, you've mentioned a couple of Jess times. Jess was my one of my teachers. Yeah, yeah. Like you mentioned a couple of times that I was told this and I learned this and I did this. But it feels like now you, you're just like you're just going to paint the way you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I think you like the thing is you always have your teacher in your head. It's like a little puppet telling you what to do. Yeah. And then you can. I'm quite a very rude person. <laughs> so I, you know, turn it like. I definitely think you have to go out and just do things like this might not work. Do being brave is really important. Yeah, and also I think the rag's important because then you're you're mod you're sh you know the rag can do more unusual things. You know the paint is yeah. when it's going on you're Removing. too conscious, mm -hmm. but when you're like rubbing it away and knocking it back with the rag, it's it's more uh, volatile. Mm. Has anyone else got any question? A question, yeah. It was just, um, yeah, it was just a comment you, a small comment you said earlier about looking at the eyes. You don't look at it as an eye, just a collection of different things you said. But yeah. So like when you you were painting that vase, that subject there, are you looking at the individual little shapes that then will compose a vase, or are you looking at the vase and think, right, I'm going to paint the vase, or do you think, right, I've got a highlight there? Are you deconstructing it, or are you just so like what I said, so an eye, when you're looking at an eye, if you're doing painting it in classical t way, in a classical way, you're just painting that pure abstract marks. It's not an eye, it's just a collection of marks. Right. Um, and when I did that vase, I was probably, it's always a little bit of both. Probably I'm moving out towards tentatively, because I also, as men as me going on about being brave, I am a real cow, like, being a coward is a huge facet of my personality, so I have to, that's why I have to think about this stuff, that's why I'm going on about it, because I had to think about it. Anyway, it's both, basically. Right. It's, both, it's two sides of your brain, for one thing. And there was just a second. 
question. Actually, we spoke briefly downstairs about muted colours. I mean, have you always done that, or because you said about starting with a bit of box red, it can be quite challenging. But do you? You said you've got. I just. Uh, there are different. Um, it's called. Uh, what's that? It's not muted. It's um, that word. Palette. You know. Uh, limited palette. They're right. classical. There's various ones. It goes. The Zorn palette is like literally lamp black, you know, the darkest yellow, the right. darkest red. Right. They've, people have been playing with them. So the different palettes you can use. And I don't like the orange end of the spectrum. I do, but my palette doesn't actually. Like, it's yet more towards the yellow. Yeah. Orange is a semitone. Sorry. Doesn't make sense. Sorry. It's orange is just... I like the, um, I think about it in terms of harmony. Right. So orange is hard to harmonise, an extreme modern orange, which doesn't really, it's like a half tone. Don't know what I'm on that. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, pain doesn't make any sense. No. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Any, anyone? Yeah, as to what about the spirit of place? What about the old gods of West Penwith? Are they oh, yeah. visiting them over at Pendine? Are they going to, oh. if you spend more time there, do you think? That's been how you paint the landscape. In my dreams. <laughs> In my dreams, honey. It's possible. Yeah, the old giant up there. And then one day a man had to walk out, didn't want to go around the coast, he wanted to walk across. And he had to fight with the old giant then. And then that was it. That's one, oh God, my godmother told me that story, sorry. Well, I didn't relate it that well, but. No, it's <laughs> good. But he also, that's a really nice painting, the angel painting. Where did that come from? Is that from a dream or from a kind of. Which painting? The angel uh, over Senna. Oh, that. Um, <coughs> it's the sun rising. And then sometimes, you know, you see something in, I saw something in the marks I'd made, and then I just made it the angel over Senna. I love Senna, it's a very wonderful place. <laughs> mm. And uh, any other questions? Just yeah. portraits, do you think you'll do, is, is this kind of one, you know, do you not do many of them, or do you think you'll do more, or in yeah. yourself with your twins? Yeah, I always come back to self-portraits mm. because it's obviously something you've got when you've got nothing else. You've got, <laughs> hopefully you've got a mirror, or you can look in a, in a puddle. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll probably keep going with that. Anyone else? So, um, one more thing I wanted to ask you about. What do you, like, who do you kind of, like, who, who are you connecting with as other, you know, you talked about Bonnard, but any, anyone else that you feel a kingship with at the moment, <coughs> within your painting, that you feel is helping you? Um, I've actually been doing a Jesse Leroy Smith and looking at yeah. old, like, Greek statue. Uh, I can't remember. I've got lots of. I've been looking at those oh, right, a lot, yeah. and um, who am I else am I looking at? Um, well, obviously, I've been reading Matisse on art. Um, uh, Can I ask you as well, like, uh, how do you feel about, you know, what's exciting? I mean, most of the most interesting current figurative painters are women at the moment in mm. this country. And that's a lot to do with the idea that, you know, it's a new perspective, a new way of, a new palette, a new everything. And it's not new, but it's yeah. been overlooked, you know. So when you get yeah. an artist like Alice Neal, do you know, you know Alice Neal? Love Alice Neal, yeah. Yeah, so like seeing Alice Neal's paintings recently in the Tate, it's like, mm. why, why haven't I seen, you know, why haven't they been in the Tate? That's yeah. another massive discussion. So good, but, she's so good. Yeah. You know, like, how do you feel as a woman making paintings now and the, the kind of, a connection with other women and that mm. is a new form of figuration you know it, it, it's always been there but it's it's kind of now it's been it's been out to celebrate it more. i'm so happy i'm just really glad to be here me yeah, yeah. and uh I, lo I love i'm really into the whole canon of painting and i'm not into separationist sure, thinking yeah. Yeah. And uh, I really love Alice Neal. I think it's great that women are able to do My brother once said to me, 
No, God, I shouldn't say my mum. Anyway, <laughs> someone said to me, you know, <laughs> Picasso, like, you know, no, you could never get a female Picasso, <laughs> has been said, because he had the sort of energy of a murderer, apparently. And that really pissed me off. And I think that anything that you can take and you can put it in your fire and you, make, and it go, you can make it work for you. That's what, what I think about that. Well, see, yeah, see, that's interesting. You say, like, oh, I, you know, um, I just believe that, you know, you don't want to separate, separate things, but when you just went into one, that anger is, is, is a good thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? That's what I mean. It's a positive thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's yeah. great that, thank God, you know, we don't have to be judged on what's in our pants. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and just be judged by what's in our pants. That's great. Yeah. Women and men as well. Fine art, it's the subject. Yeah. Like, I, you know, it's like if the, a woman wasn't in it, it wasn't really a piece, unless you were landscape or something. Yeah. So it's good that women are. Maybe a, a landscape can be female as well. Exactly. But. Do you think much? I mean, it's good women are painting because they've always been the, the subject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> But I like I like it when she gets angry. There's <laughs> <laughs> enthusiasm, not anger. Pardon? You talk about harmony and tone. Have, I know you're a musician as well, Asta. <laughs> Have you taken your music into your art? Do you think? Do well, you think I think that I think of it. I do think of it. Okay. If you take all tone, like just basically, I studied <coughs> music at Goldsmiths and then. There's, I study pop music, and there's also the classical folk, and they get a tennis ball, they drop it. The music's like, un sorry guys, it's unlistenable sometimes, you know, when it's taken to its extreme. And then they can also obviously play incredibly well. And, and in art, it's the same, in painting it's the same, in, in visual art, you have your colours. And I, you know, you can learn, uh, you can learn the theory of music. And, you can, and for me, there's the theory of colour as well. It's the same. So you can like have, and to me, uh, and it can be as erratic as like dropping a tennis ball. And it, people really get off on that, that's great. But also, I, I do like the harmony, to, hit, to see harmony, hear harmony. Yeah, Tim? I was thinking about Marlene Dumas. Mark. Oh yeah, yeah so good. Work, and work. You, they could really sit together. And, yeah. <laughs> she's amazing. I love her. Yeah. Like, she's so tender and mm. emotional. Yeah. 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 She also said like it's not what I paint, it's what I take away. It's the same thing with the rag. Yeah. Mm. So it, that's why you know there's a kingship there because. It, she kind of removed this what's gone, you know, I think. Yeah, yeah. And that's the same with yours. Anyone else before we finish? Yeah. Have you got a question? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just sort of like the interesting, because is it oil, like actual paint? It's like um, just spray paint that you get. It's really from like that combination. Is that yeah, like me it? too. I, I, that was the day before, you know, I just. I don't know. I really <laughs> like spray paint. It's great because it brings another element and it's soft and it's. Um, it's just a really nice contrast because the like the oil paint is so like they're just like real. I'm not trying to say it's really traditional, but it's got that like quite classic look. And with the spray paint, it's just that really nice sort of just position. Yeah, there's quite a lot of white spray paint on some of the paintings downstairs. So it's just this mist. I just. Yeah, came to, I've come to that quite recently, so we'll see where that goes. I'm excited about it. Thanks. You've got the same. Uh, is this this is like oil bar or paint? Oil paint. That it's blue, is because it's almost exactly the same. It's the same. It's probably what's that colour? Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it's the same kind. Well, no, ultramarine and then. Cobalt. So this is cobalt. These are ultramarine and cobalt together. You, in, right. a, in, a, in every colour, obviously, you get lots of different types. But what I quite like is taking one half of the colour one way, and yeah. then another half the other way, and then it kind of like it looks good. Yeah, sure. Basically. So, every, one more question. I think. Yeah. What would you like to ask? I'm wondering mm. if like mm. the composition 
has some kind of, because it's, it's very pleasing and it's got real depth, and I'm wondering if we've got some kind of mathematical, you know, like the golden ratio or something. Like yeah, that. Well, it How you probably decide. does, because they're in inches. And the golden ratio relates to the non-metric system A, and then it's like I always, I use the divisions on a you know the division the classical divisions of a rectangle, two might be a square division there. Yeah, so that's square here. Yeah. And then this will be two halves of the rest of it, and yeah, so yeah. It seems like really risky to spray paint it. You presumably you paint the portrait and then you go in. Yeah. If you kind of mess it up at that point. Yeah, but you can always take it away. Yeah, that's the amazing. Paint over it. You just take it off mm. with spray paint. With a rag. Yeah, yeah there's spray loads paint. of spray paint went on that, and it's a lot of it's come off. Yeah, just you can like you can you can intervene you can intervene with paint in a way that you can't intervene with time. Yeah. Not much else. <laughs> Yeah. Sense that you're sort of, which is good. That is no, that's my natural nature. It's very messy. <laughs> <laughs> extreme, extreme mess. So then, yeah, yeah. You've got undeniable talent, Esther. You absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Fran. So that might be a nice way to yeah. end. That's yeah. all right. Yeah. And thank you for putting. Yeah.